Right. In this video we're going to be continuing on with the previous one on NADBI and making our little database. We're going to set up a quick little shop where we can purchase a weapon and we're going to have a cash variable that we're going to use and pretty much every time we purchase from the shop and as well as I'm going to place it on another unit and when we get a kill it is going to bring us in money it's going to save it to the database when we spend the money it's going to save it to the database and pretty much just make it a simple way to actually utilize it so get started we're just going to place down a unit name them shopkeep so I've already made a SQF file called shop so we're going to go ahead and execute it exe.cvm shop.sqf since this is something we want to run on all clients we put it in our init.sqf now in here we're going to use add action and since we named them shopkeep add action by links get a cost uh, 100 alright and here's where we want the script now something good about add action as well I found this on the Bohemian simulations page for uh, virtual battle space so they have this here so pretty much how we had this select 0 1 2 so on so on when we would call a file sending in parameters we do the exact same thing here with inside of add action except it's automatically for us so the first one is target being shopkeep second one being the caller which is us and we're going to be focusing on the caller. So, unit equals this select one. Now the unit is going to be us. Now, we're going to go ahead and make a new file here, call it save data. Go ahead and just leave the UID at the top. We already know we're going to have to make that. Anyhow, if you watched the previous video, so we're going to pass that in. So we're going to get it, go ahead and get it. So UID equals get player UID unit. Then we're going to go ahead and call it passing that in. So null equals inside your brackets what we want to pass in, which is our UID exec vm save data.sqf. Go ahead and save it. So now that we have that, we already have our UID grabbed. We're going to go ahead and make a new any DBI equals new. Then UID call oh, 00, zero, zero, zero any DBI. All right, now we have our new object here. We can go ahead and pretty much save what we want. So as of right now, we are going to be saving the player's gear. Right. Go ahead and make another variable real quick. Just go ahead and call it cache, make it a global variable, cache equals zero. Cache, because even though we really don't need to pass that in actually so then it goes to calls the in the init server check for database so if it does not exist we call create database and right now the only thing we have that in create database is the name so we can make a new one right player info cache we're just gonna call well since we're just starting this we can go ahead and just set it to zero right off the bat call any DBI actually I set this up wrong as well this actually needs to be a public variable so we will do that here in a second so we go ahead and get that set up 
delete our old file which we no longer need all right so now we should have immediately two set up right off the bat we can go ahead and make in our wait that's still in the init we can go ahead and make this as well just to make it a little bit better so we already have everything there when it actually creates the database okay so let's go ahead and get rid of this here and we actually already have this save data so the things that are passed into it right now are the UID and the gear so we can go ahead and pass in another parameter Let's see I'm getting lost where I am. Right, so we're just going to leave that. We're going to take our UID. We are not going to create the new object. We're actually going to make a public variable. So public variable server save data make our new array, save data, it's going to hold our UID, as you can see here the first thing is, yep, the UID, then it's the gear, I'm in the wrong spot, unit loadout player now that we have those two the new thing we want to send in is our cache so cache here equals data select two which we will be passing in as well so save data You know that's really unnecessary to do that, but all right. So we're passing in three things: our UID, our gear, and our cache. So we're calling. Well, we're going to be running the public variable server, save data, the event handler for that's right here. First thing that's grabbed: UID. Second thing: gear. Third thing: cache. So we already use our UID up here. We already have our gear right up there which we can just write player info cache cache call nadbi2 and just so we can actually see it data saved To make an add action here so we can continually print off the cache as well. If I can even type to save my life here. Alright, so now when we run it. Line 9 of create database, undefined variable, and gear. I probably forgot to pass that. Alright, so in our first part. We're going to go ahead and get our gear, just like we did before, and save data. And we're going to be passing that in. Actually, make it a little easier. Since we're not actually going to be setting anything up when we initially do this, we can just leave this blank. If 
file does exist, getting data. Which is a little bit corrupted because we did not have the gear variable defined in create database. Ah. Okay, don't leave a blank. Just have extra closing and opening square brackets. File does not exist, creating database. And there. Alright, so we have our name stored, our cache set up, and our gear saved. Hit cache, we have zero. Can't buy the links. Well, I haven't set that up yet. Data saved. Now it's saved our gear since we, quote, purchased the links, even though we haven't set that up to get it yet. But we can also increase our cache. So cache equals um, 100. Then we go up here just to save it again. We can see cache equals 100. So now we're going to go ahead and set up the shop to actually purchase the links and we're going to place down a unit to kill to just get money. Make him have no chance, be a survivor. Test AI, just for the name. Where was it going? Right. So we're going to go ahead and add an event handler to his, the AI. So test AI, add event handler, killed. And here we're going to just set cache equals cache plus 100. This is a very generic example. And as well, let's just go ahead and hit. and hint our cash amount when we do kill the unit inside of shop have unit add weapon then I already have the class name right here and it should save the data so multiplayer go ahead and actually delete this so when we do buy it it saves fresh. File does not exist. Creating database. We have the base stuff. Name, cache zero, gear empty. Go ahead and kill the unit. Cache is now 100. Go ahead and buy the links. We now have a links. Voila. Now inside our database, we have our links right here. And our cache is set to 100 because we got the kill. Now shop, we can just set cash equals cash minus 100 because that's what it cost. We can also do a little check here. So if cash is greater than or equal to 100, then do this stuff. Else, hint, not enough cash. Go ahead and start it. Should say file does exist. Getting data. Let's see, we should have a hundred dollars right now. There, we have zero dollars because we spent it. Of course, not enough cash. So set cash equal to 100. Cash is now 100, and buy the links. Saves the data. Cash is back down to zero since we just spent it, and our gear saved again. So that's pretty much the gist of how you would generally kind of have that set up for simplicity. But, yeah, that's really about it.
you can do a lot more stuff like this. You can get the player's position, pass it into the save data event handler as well. Okay, when you're ready, you can just simply read from it. One thing I did forget to do is on our load data, why it was set to zero, was to pass our money variable back in. So go back to your gate data file. And get data is ran from here. So we do actually need to pass the cache variable in to check for database. So we have cache. cache equals data select 3 then we're going to go ahead and pass in cache to get data so cache and I just had a brain fart ignore the past few steps Just go over here to get data, have it read from it. So we'll just have it set to cache equals read. Gonna need to see exactly what this looks like. So read player info cache. Then just your brackets call any DBI. Now, when you're going to go to when it's going to run the load data, it's going to have be passing in an array instead of just that single variable. So over here in load data, we have gear select this one. However, that's going to be selecting the entire array. And just for the safe side, we're going to go make it private. That just like before, data data equals this select one. gear equals data select zero and cash equals data select one so now we can actually go ahead and make this set this to ten thousand for the example go ahead and restart the mission file does exist getting data go ahead and print cash and we have 10,000. So we can just keep buying, keep buying, keep buying. And this should equal like, I don't know, 600 off. Yeah, called it. Yeah, so now it equals 9,400. So that's how you would want to kind of check for the database, go through and read it. And whenever the player joins, if there is his already, he already has his own file, you can retrieve the data you want from it as well as you can write to it simply by all you have to do is just literally call this file here save data and pass in the UID of the player and you can add whatever you feel like adding to it just make sure you pass it to the save data event handler in this array so that way it can have what it needs done in here and that is all